Okay, can you hear me now, Josh? Yeah, that's great. Okay, Glad great, good, okay. Okay. Oh, it's only, it's 12.32 okay. oh. my time. We're, we're two minutes late, we'll take it. We, we'll make it up, I promise. Um, all right, I'm gonna start over. So thank you for joining. Um, now can we get some thumbs up that you can hear me? <laughs> good, I love those, thank you. So um, like I mentioned, we're, we're excited. We're up here in Minnesota, we're live from our shop. We got a lot to cover today. Um, we, we have a lot of people joining us from around the nation. I think even some people up in Canada. So thank you, thank you for attending. We have traffic safety companies. We have uh, people from cities and counties, uh, DOTs from around the nation. So each of you probably use this stuff on a daily basis. Your crews are using it. You are responsible for maintaining it and fixing it. Um, we wanna share with you some of the tips and tricks that Joe and his team uses to keep our fleet of equipment in tip top shape. And when we even help uh, troubleshoot some of our customers' equipment uh, to keep that in tip top shape. If you could turn the furnace off for me, we don't need that noise. Um, we're gonna keep things pretty casual today. If you have questions, please put them in the chat and we will address the questions as they come up. We're not gonna wait till the end and answer them all then. Um, make sure to keep adding people in the waiting room, guys, if people are still trying to get in. We had uh, a nice response to this, so we're excited to, to share with you today. Two minutes real quick on who Street Smart is for those of you that haven't worked with us. So we're not a manufacturer. We're not a traffic safety company. We are a rental company and we also sell all of the equipment behind me. Um, message boards, aero boards, portable traffic signals, rumble strips, uh, smart work zone system. Basically anything you find um, you know, on a trailer that's in a, in a work zone, we can rent that to you uh, very economically. So if you haven't worked with us, please reach out, get a hold of our current rental rates. Um, I think you'll be surprised at, you know, again, the economics behind renting this equipment versus uh, buying it and, and then, you know, crossing your fingers, hoping you're going to keep it busy after that next project and next year. Um, we, had a, we had a really strong last year, 2020, and, and the pipeline looks really good for us and for our industry, um, which is exciting. We, we've done a lot of one-on-one -on -one webinars with companies and everybody seems very optimistic heading into this season. So we want to be your resource. Uh, we've, we've been at this for about 22 years, and uh, we help companies of all sizes, mom and pop companies that, you know, know they can't own any of that equipment, um, all the way up to, you know, companies that do hundreds of millions of dollars every year in revenue. The, the economics of renting this equipment makes sense for, for all players. Um, I'm going to give you a phone number. If you have a pen, write it down, because I want you to keep it in your cell phone, not only for rental quotes and sales, obviously, but for technical support. So everything we're about to go over today Keep this number in your phone and um, we will, you know, make sure to, to help you, whether it's our equipment or if you've never worked with us, equipment you own, we can help you get it fixed. Um, if you want to pin the window that, that I'm in to make it full screen, that way you can see what we're um, talking about. It should take up your entire monitor. You can get a good view on, on um, what we're looking at. Um, I believe everybody should be muted. If you're not, for whatever reason, if you could please just uh, mute yourself to eliminate any background noise. Um, and I, I got to say this because I had something crazy happen to me last year. I was on a, a webinar that got hacked um, by, a, by a bot, and I won't get into the specifics because it was uh, rather disturbing. If this meeting were to get hacked, we will end it immediately and we will reschedule. Um, it's a reality we live in today. There's people that set up algorithms to hack meetings for, the, for their own joys. Um, so we're going to monitor that really closely. God forbid anything happens, we're going to end the meeting immediately. So I'll leave it at that. Um, all right. I'm excited to announce and to introduce, for those of you that don't know, Joe Balaban. Joe is our national uh, operations manager. So we have, if you were to put it in a single file line, um, about seven and a half miles of this traffic safety equipment. So message boards, aero boards, everything I just mentioned. Single file line, it would stretch seven and a half miles. Joe and his team are responsible for keeping that stuff in tip-top shape. Um, Joe gets consulted by some of the manufacturers that we, we represent when they are designing new products. Joe, hey, we're trying to do this. What do you think? He's been in the industry about 13 years. Okay. And has really seen everything. Um, I think he, he's, a, he's a natural problem solver at heart, so he loves a good challenge. And, um, you know, I'm excited to have him share with you some of the, 
the, the tips again that we use around Street Smart um, today. So last summer we did one of these and we covered about 14 different products, I think. We were sweating bullets and we had to really talk fast at the end to keep it under an hour. Today it's more of a focus, focus session, right? We're gonna talk about lead acid batteries, um, what your techs should have out on their trucks when they're going to di diagnose problems out in the field, uh, some common issues with aero boards, some common things with message boards. We'll talk about solar a little bit. Um, and then, you know, take questions as we go. Um, we can follow up with everybody that attended today. We're gonna to be recording this webinar and then we'll have some maintenance checklists that, that we want you to take back to your shops um, if you don't have those already. Again, use us as a resource um, for troubleshooting these products. If you need repair parts, things like that, we can, we can repair all this stuff. So Joe, um, thanks for your, your time today. What are we gonna talk about first? <laughs> One second. Thumbs up that we can hear Joe. Thumbs down. Okay, I think you're coming through my mic. Um, are you unmuted? Do you have to unmute Joe? You're unmuted. Okay. Use mine. We're gonna go. <laughs> okay, how about how about now? It looks like it just changed from the uh, earpiece. All good. All right, everyone can hear me? Okay, perfect. So we're going to start it off with lead-acid batteries. Again, like I said, this is the lifeblood of majority of your equipment. Um, so what we have here is a pallet of brand new GC2 batteries. Um, what we currently use in majority of our equipment it's a deep cycle interstate battery. It's a GC2 ECL UTL. Uh, that's the part number. It's a 225 amp hour lead acid battery. Uh, what that means is there's water inside of these. Um, once you pop these open, um, that's where all your, your water is for your lead acid. And you wanna make sure that you're filling this up with distilled water anytime you have to add uh, water to the batteries. Um, Distilled water is going to be needed because of all the chemicals that's in uh, your tap water and um, your well water, stuff like that. There's a lot of iron and a lot of chemicals in there. And as you know, a battery is a chemical reaction. So if you add extra chemicals, it's not going to react properly. Um, with these, you want to make sure that you have uh, your, your plates are going to be covered, as you can see in this example. Give it a little bump there. So the plates are fully covered, but the water is not coming all the way up. Um, uh, when anything heats up, it expands. So if you fill them all the way to the top, then the water and uh, acid is going to uh, come out the vent holes on the batteries uh, during a charge or, you know, really hot day, stuff like that. Um, so this is the lifeblood for majority of, of your equipment. Um, uh, in the near future here, manufacturers have already started changing. Um, they started changing to more of a, it's a 35... 35 amp hour SLA batteries. It's a sealed lead acid battery. As you can see, there's no way to, to fill the water in there. It's a maintenance free battery. Um, the the Vermac Pro Series units are currently using these. They have uh, four to five batteries in there, depending on your configuration. They have a northern configuration, which has five batteries, and a southern configuration that has four batteries. Um, so, again, it's maintenance free, no need to fill water uh, in those but these ones you definitely do. Um, so with that also, anytime you get a brand new battery, all batteries come at an 80% charge. So you always wanna to top them off, charge them for you know, overnight before you actually wanna deploy them into service. Um, so with that here, we got just a, a quick view of, of what these look like when you wanna tie them together for charging. Um, again, we use just a, just a 12 volt battery charger. Okay, this is the, the DLS. 15, it's a 15 amp charger with the IQ4. The IQ4 means that you can plug this thing in indefinitely and it's not gonna harm your batteries. It monitors, monitors the voltage, it monitors the current, 
um, and it won't overcharge your batteries. So we definitely recommend these. Majority of the manufacturers already use the IOTA product. It's proven through and throughout. So um, you can always get those at, at Street Smart as well. Um, so as you see here, we have our six volt batteries. So we have to tie them into, into series here. So you take two six volts and now we make one 12 volt battery just by connecting the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Okay, think of it like a flashlight. You stack the batteries in your flashlight, you have a positive touching and negative. So what that does is this increases the voltage. Okay, so we have the increased voltage is a six volt battery, two six volt batteries that are now a 12 volt system. So as you can see here, we have these wired in series and then we have them wired in parallel. Uh, wiring, wiring them in parallel, it doubles the, the amp hour. So each of these is a 225 amp hour battery. Now our bank of four is a 12 volt, 450 amp hour system, just with these four batteries. This is the way all your message boards are wired, arrow boards, signals, everything's wired in the same configuration. Um, as you can see to the pallet right over here, this is what they look like uh, when we're gonna do a mass charge. Uh, we'll charge an entire pallet or two pallets at one time. So this is exactly what it, uh, what it would look like in your, in your message board if you used 20 batteries in your message board. Um, so we just run it all the way down the line here, daisy chain it over to the next one, and then bring that group back. Now, when it comes to charging this stuff, you want to span the batteries. Um, and what I mean by span the battery bank is you want to make sure you make a connection, you know, your positive connection here, and then your negative connection at the very end. Um, so in, in this one, you'd have your, your positive connected up here, and then your negative would be all the way over here on the negative side. So then your current runs through every single battery to get all the way or to fill the entire bank. If you just connected positive here, negative here to these 12 volt batteries, it's going to charge the whole battery bank, but it's gonna fill these batteries. Once these are full, it's gonna go into this one and then this one, so on and so forth. If you charge them all at the same time, then they all get that same current and all that same charge, you know, at, at the same time. Joe, I have a couple questions. Yes, sir. Um, can I store batteries on the concrete floor? I've heard that dream. That, that does not, that's a, that's a myth. Um, I think that myth came out because concrete is cold. You set it down on the ground, right? If you have it up on some blocks, it's gonna be more airflow. Um, I, I could see, a potential for freezing, probably not. Um, there, there are a lot of myths when it comes to batteries and storing them on concrete is definitely one that's not gonna affect your batteries. Okay, and do I need to add lead to batteries when I'm filling them with water? Nope, you don't, ha you don't ever have to add anything. Um, th there are, you know, you'll get your, your salesmen that come out and say you should add acid to it or this acid is better. Um, you don't want to do that. It's actually called a hot charge when you dump acid inside the battery. The acid is already stored within the plates. Um, so during a charge and a discharge, then that acid gets mixed up uh, with, the, uh, with the water. Um, and you could always test that with a specific gravity tester. Um, you can pick those up at any of your local NAPAs or you know, auto play stores. Um, it has the gauge right on it of exactly what your specific gravity should be. Um, but as you can see here, we also have these things strapped up. This isn't just for looks. If you're, if you're towing, uh, uh, you're, you have any mess or any batteries in, in the truck going out for uh, service on the road, um, you're always going to want to strap them up good because they will tip over um, and then drain out. Um, even if that water drains out, you still don't want to add acid. Just add water, charge it up, and then you can do a specific gravity test and load test to make sure that everything is good. Load yep. So this this is our load tester that 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 Street Smart uses. As you can see, it's a pretty simple looking machine, right? All we got to do here is just hook up your positive and your negative on your battery. Again, you want to do this when the when it's fully charged. So as you can see here, your voltage is about 6.4 volts, 6.6 uh, .6 is a fully charged 
battery in ideal conditions, okay? We don't live in the perfect world, so don't necessarily expect that on, on, on everything. Close counts. Um, with the six volt batteries here, we run those at about a 300 to 350 amp. So we'll crank this baby up. All right, so 300, hit that timer there. It's gonna go for 15 seconds and you can watch this gauge. Okay, this tells you exactly what your battery is doing. Um, at that five volt mark, um, you can see here that at 70, 70 degrees, 4.8 volts would be appropriate. Here at Street Smart, we call it five volts. Uh, five volts is gonna be uh, definitely the, the low test that, that, that we wanna see. So what really what this does is it takes a, a 300 to a 350 amp draw, whatever you put your dial at, and it takes a draw off the battery. Now to really test the battery, we're, we're looking at recovery time and we're seeing if we can handle the load. As you saw, it stayed right at 5.2 volts. That's a fantastic battery. You really can't get any better. 5.4 is the best I've really seen batteries at. So anything above five, you're solid for at least a year. Um, so uh, when, when you do those load tests, you just want to make sure that it's uh, uh, fully charged up. If it's not fully charged, you're not going to get an, an accurate reading. And if you drop it below the, below the five volts, uh, it's probably something that you're going to want to replace uh, before you actually put the board out, out into use. Um, when doing the, the load test, you do not need to remove all the cabling in your message board. If you're doing a message board, you have four batteries to test. You don't have to disconnect anything. Put your load test right up there and then just crank it up to the 300, 350 amp hour, or amps. Um, uh, question. Mm -hmm. um, how long should I leave a battery in a message board? You know, do I just wait for it to die or, you know, when do you recommend it? Three, four, five years? Minimum, talk about that. Yep, so the, the life expectancy on a, on a GC2 is five years. Uh, we really take that to heart here at Street Smart. After five years, whether load test good or not, we usually tend to take them out and, and replace them. Okay. Um, uh, sometimes they do last longer. It really is all about care. Uh, you know, with, with anything that I'm talking about today, you know, in the, the environment matters, the temperature matters. Uh, there's so many different variables that, that matter that it's um, you really can't nail it down to one very specific, like five years, four years, something like that. It's all about maintenance. You know, are you stay keeping up on the battery, uh, the water, water levels in the batteries, discharge cycles, charge cycles, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but five years would be a really good rule of thumb. Uh, now, when it comes to these SLA batteries, that has the, the same life expectancy as a GC2. So this should last approximately five years as well. Now, when we're, when we're talking these, these SLA batteries, you can do the same load test on them. It's a 35 amp hour battery. So we're gonna be running that load test at about 100 amps instead of 350. Uh, on aero boards, they use uh, an 18 amp hour battery, still a, lead acid, a sealed lead acid battery. So you'd wanna run your test at about 60, I'm sorry, 30 amps for your 18 amp hour battery. Um, you can always pick up a, you know, a heavy duty load tester um, at, at a, you know, many of your battery uh, distributors. Um, and then they also have like small handheld ones. Um, I haven't had too much luck with those. I'm currently looking for a really good, reliable one. Uh, and once we find one, we'll put it on our next webinar. Yeah, you know it, let us know. <laughs> right. Make sure you're talking about it on my phone. Sorry for the audio issues. Um, what are we doing next? Good question. Yeah, question one, did you change all the batteries in the battery? Change all the batteries at once. That's, that's a great question. The answer is yes. If you have one bad battery, that's going to ruin an entire bank. The, the discharge rate is going to be higher. It's going to actually, you're, you're going to ruin your other batteries if you don't replace it. So anytime you replace one, I suggest replacing all of them. Really the, the rule of thumb is to make sure that you have light years and light load tests. Um, but if you change them all out and put new ones in, then you've already accomplished that without any, uh, without any complications. Okay. So that's a, that's a great question. Good. And again, uh, uh, questions, type them into the chat. We will address them as they come up. So um, let's wrap up batteries here. Anything else, Joe? What about keeping them clean? You know, we've seen some, some disasters come back, right? <laughs> Just corrosion and uh, snakes and mice and all that fun stuff. So, what do you recommend, you know, to, to spray on these things, if anything, before they leave your shop? And then just, you know, how should I be keeping them clean? 
Yeah, that's, a, that's another great question. Um, you always want to keep your batteries clean. What happens, you get uh, dust and debris, dirt, film on top of the batteries, and then when, the, uh, when it vents, when the battery vents, then you get the collection of uh, the venting, the acid, and the water, and then you actually create corrosion. That's going to attach to any of your metal, the, the lead on the batteries, the, the copper on the terminals, um, it's all going to collect, corrode, and start corroding the wires and eating those connections away. Um, the best thing is to, you know, keep them as clean as you possibly can. You know, you can even, um, you know, wire wheel the stuff, uh, whatever it takes to get that corrosion off of there. And then we use a battery terminal spray uh, to really coat those, uh, those metal connections, and it keeps that corrosion off of them. So that's a, it's, it's a really big part, especially when you're talking about connectivity and having things charge and run properly, is to make sure you check your connections and make sure that nothing is heavily corroded. Yep. Um, then, sorry, again, just keep talking at the end of sorry. the time. I know you <laughs> use your hands a lot, but that's, that's awesome. Um, two weeks ago, it was a negative 15 here in Minnesota. Um, we have these boards in the cold climates and where it gets really hot. Um, talk a, a little bit about you know, winter clear and discussed out in the, in the cold elements. How do these things hold up and what are the most important things to think about? Let's talk about the winter piece of it first. Yep. Okay. So in the winter, battery freezing is definitely, I mean, it's, it's inevitable. Um, you can prevent battery freezing by always keeping your batteries charged. Uh, keep them on a charger. Uh, make sure the panels are clean so they're getting a charge when they're out there. Uh, as long as the battery is charged up, you know, above a, you know, 70% uh, state of charge, then your battery should never freeze. Um, so that, that's pretty much the main thing there is to keep them, uh, keep them charged up, keep the water churning, uh, and they won't freeze. Now, the flip side of that, the summertime, uh, summer has a huge effect on the batteries as well. Um, all that heat can actually ruin the batteries. So in, in that instance, you get a lot of burn off. A lot of the water will, will evaporate out of there. So you just want to make sure you stay up on your, on your water, on your batteries. Make sure that water and that acid level is above the plate, but not so high that it gets into the, uh, the, the orifice at the top of the battery for that, that water expansion. Okay. Okay. So keeping a jug of distilled water in your truck uh, when you're going out to troubleshoot a board is imperative. Oh, absolutely. A few, few gallons, uh, you know, uh, absolutely. Especially down, down south, you're going to want that. Yeah. Um, well, one main thing, too, to cover is when uh, in the wintertime, if you do have to add water into your batteries and it is cold outside, you really want to charge that battery right away. Uh, otherwise, what happens is that water just sits on the very top and it doesn't mix in with the acid quick enough. That'll freeze that freezing cognitive expansion and you're actually going to crack the side of your batteries and that battery is now dead and you got, you have to replace it. So don't go in that new water onto a frozen battery, take the battery out, mm -hmm. take it home, add the water, charge it, replace those batteries with new ones that you brought in your truck. Yep, so ab you absolutely. And then um, you also brought up a good point, uh, unknowingly, uh, if you, uh, if a battery is frozen, you cannot put a charge on it. If you put a charge on it, you will run the risk of that battery exploding. Um, so you want to make sure to bring it back to your facility, uh, open up the vent, let it thaw out all the way, and then you can add water and do a charge. But if it's frozen, you got to thaw it before you do anything. Okay. I just thought of something. We're going to have a little fun with the Q&A uh, chat down at the bottom. I want people to enter things that they learned during the webinar. So um, if you learn anything, type it in there, and we will give away a $50 Amazon gift card. Um, for anybody that enters something, we'll, we'll draw a name out of the hat, and we'll, uh, we'll send that to you. So um, let's keep going here. We do have a question. How about maintenance-free battery maintenance in the winter? <laughs> maintenance-free battery maintenance. How do you like that one? In the winter. Woo, this is getting exciting. <laughs> As it says, uh, they're, they're maintenance-free. There, there is no maintenance. Uh, your normal terminal spray is going to always apply to everything um, to keep the cables from, from corroding. But as you see, there's no way to add water. Um, a, lead, a sealed lead acid battery still does run the risk of uh, freezing. So you definitely just want to keep those charged. Um, it, again, if, if you do have something that, that dies in the wintertime, uh, more than likely it's going to be from snow on the panels, the panels being shaded, something like that. 
So I would just make sure that you get those things charged up all the way, bring them back to your facility, let them thaw, charge up, and you'll be good to go. All right, all right. Um, so what, uh, one of the things when you're talking uh, batteries and, and charging them, uh, that's why we use the, the, the DLS 15 or 30 with the IQ4, is overcharging also has a, um, a, a ter terrible effect on the batteries. You can, you can charge them too much, right? So that's why we recommend the IQ4. That makes this charger a smart charger. Uh, so it monitors what's actually supposed to be bringing in um, at what voltage. These things are, are relatively cheap. Um, it's always depending on the model. It's 15 amp, 30 amp, 45 amp, but you're probably at about $200 uh, for the system with the IQ4. Again, this is a system that you can mount right inside your message board and it's always there. So when you guys bring them back, all I gotta do is plug it in and now you're good to go for your next rental. Okay. Keep going. All right. All right, so then we want to go to, uh, yeah, covered a couple of the uh, myths and solar panels in the message board. All right, so we're going we're gonna to spin this around. We have a message board outside. Um, there's definitely a few key parts to, to note here. Um, so the, this next, next section, we're really going to go off of the, the solar panels, right? I mean, the batteries are the, are the lifeblood of your unit, but your solar panels is what helps that keep moving. So as you can see here, we have a, a Vermec 1210 message board. Um, we'll just jump right into the, to the solar here. I mean, this is this little section here underneath power where we have our battery voltage, our usage, our solar voltage, and then our solar amps. Get right in there. Okay. All that, all those numbers really make a difference. Um, so if your batteries are at 14.6, uh, that means your unit's pretty charged up. As you can see here, we're running at 19.6 volts for the solar at 4.39 amps. Um, uh, a solar panel completely disconnected from any kind of draw is going to receive 21 volts. Uh, so if I just disassembled this, put a voltmeter to it, we're going to get 21 volts. Uh, the reason why you see that a little lower is the lower the voltage is, then the higher the amperage goes, right? So you get more charge out of that. Uh, so with the technology they have these days with the different types of solar regulators, you know, your pulse width management or your maximum power point tracking, um, the solar panel and the regulator work together to find that perfect point of what the solar panel is going to draw the most amps. So I think uh, one, one big demonstration that, that we have here that I think speaks volumes is I'm going to take my cell phone, which is, I think it was 18 square inches. Um, it was, it's a 1.6% coverage on a solar panel. That's, that's all it's going to be. Brady, you want to put that up on the, on that far panel? Okay. So when Brady puts that up on that panel there, what we're going to watch is the charging amps because that's what really charges the unit. Okay. So now he's got that up there. Again, we have 1.6% of the panel is covered. That just dropped by almost a, uh, three quarters of an amp. There we go, look at that. I mean, that just dropped by an amp. That's 20 to 25% less charging ability strictly from a 1.6% coverage. So the point we're trying to get across here is if there's trees in your way, if there's, if there's any shadowing on, on, the, on the solar panels, if there's dirt on the solar panels, if there's, even a light pole that's putting a shadow on the solar panel, that's going to have a huge effect on the, on the, uh, on the charging ability. In the wintertime, in the northern states, snow is huge. Um, here at, at StreetSmart, as soon as it snows, the very next day, we send our crew out and start cleaning off solar panels. It has an enormous effect on it. So make sure that your solar panels are clean, clean of debris, clean of ice, clean of dirt, that will make an enormous difference on your setup. So that's uh, just one of the major points we wanted to go across. Um, now, as I said before, all these, all these numbers are kind of correlated. Um, again, th these are smart chargers inside these solar regulators as well. So if your batteries are fully charged, it's only gonna bring in a small amount of amperage. Um, as I said before, 6.6 um, .6 is a fully charged 
Oh, I'm sorry, 6.8 is a fully charged battery. I think I said 6.6 .6 before. Um, so really a fully charged battery bank is going to be 13.6 volts. So once this number reaches above 13.6, you should see that amperage drop. If your batteries were low, your amperage would be all the way up in the 7, 8, 9 amp. Something like that. That's really banging away to get that get that unit charged back up and fill that large capacity. Um, again, the, the capacity of the batteries, the 225 amp hours, that's that's a big tank to fill. So it takes a lot of amperage and a lot of time. That's why we you know we always recommend charging batteries for a minimum of 24 hours. All right, Joe. I'm going to give you a chance to catch your breath here a little bit. All right. <laughs> Maybe get the guy a bottle of water. Um, let's talk about. Um, just common message board issues in general, not related to the batteries. Um, so when you get technical calls, Joe, if you were to think of the top three, um, you know, walk through those real quickly. Um, please, if you have questions about message boards in particular, put them in the chat. We'll talk about them. We're going to finish up here on the message board in about three minutes, and then we're going to, I think, jump into the tech truck maybe. Aero boards and then the tech truck. So, Joe, uh, most common questions you get about message boards? All right, I'd say, I'd have to say probably the, the number one is going to be uh, a pixel error. Uh, a pixel error just means that there's a lot of communication between character cards or between the character cards and the COM card. Um, every manufacturer has its own name for, for a pixel error, so it's not just subject to, to Vermec. Everybody has their, um, their errors that, that they call it. Um, because we're working with a Vermac here, I'm just going to go with their verbiage. Uh, so pixel error is going to be number one. We can troubleshoot that over the phone. Usually within 15, 20 minutes, we'll know exactly what parts you need, and we can get you a part, um, a part shipped out the same day. Uh, a, another big one is going to be uh, when, your, when, your batteries, when your batteries die. So we have your, your solar regulator is going to be one point to test. Um, Graham, if you want to come in here with the, with the camera here. We'll show, show everybody. So this is the solar regulator right down in here. Okay, these are your communication wires. So you may hear me say, check your blue and yellows. That's the communication to run to the other boards and they all actually talk together. Um, now, when you're troubleshooting something like this, um, these four things, these four tabs here are the best thing to test first. This bottom one is always your negative. You can see that by the black wire coming in. Do not pay attention to the plus and minus right here. These are just the connectors that uh, were, were used for this application. So down here is your negative. Your top one is going to be your battery voltage, your solar voltage, and then your output. So if you have lights on on your regulator, but nothing is coming on on your touchscreen or anything else, you can always check that output. So negative there, positive there on your voltmeter. If you don't have that, you could have a, a blown fuse or your regulator could be bad. Um, I would say those are probably your two most common issues. Um, so that would be, uh, again, something that we can usually troubleshoot over the phone in a relative short amount of time. All right. I'm, I'm going out to the board and I can't get the damn thing to come down. It won't go down. The button doesn't work. The switch yep. doesn't work. What do I do? All right. <laughs> so switch doesn't work or vandalism. That's a, that's a huge thing. As all, all you guys know, uh, thieves love to steal these batteries. So say you get out there, switch doesn't work, cables are cut, board is deployed, you got to get it back to your shop. Right down in here, this little key handle, that's a release valve for your pump. Don't be too nervous. Once you crack that open, the board is not going to come shooting down like a guillotine. It's going to slowly move down. So go ahead and just crack that open with a, with a pliers and then just slowly keep opening it. You're going to see your message board start to drop at a slow rate. Once it gets down, Tighten that, tighten that back up, and then you can get it back to your facility for, for ease of repair. Uh, again, when it comes to vandalism, right, you're going to go out to a board and you're not quite sure what's wrong with it. Bring in batteries, bring in battery cables, ends, maybe crimpers, stuff like that are always huge because then you can always get, uh, you can get something repaired pretty quickly. All right, Joe, I'm going to put you on the spot here a minute. Let's uh, okay. bring that board down. Just grab it on there. So you're just twisting that valve. Just crack it a little bit. And as you can see, I've already gone at least a full turn. And you can see the rate at which it's dropping is, is very slow. So right now. Okay. the question is, why do you use pixel 
Uh, the six volt batteries have they have a higher um, a higher capacity. So even if it's, even if you have a a 12 volt battery that's a 225 amp hour battery, technically when you when you add two six volts together, um, you have more surface area. So you're really going to get a little bit more out of that battery. Um, the the GC2s are, are used um, in golf carts, um, lifts like scissor lifts stuff like this and it's all because the the size uh and the capacity that you can get with that battery you would need more 12 volt batteries to get the same capacity that you would out of a six volt right. and then uh since we're on the the pump here uh what's what street smart does is we always remove this this power cable here it's labeled with the the yellow this is your power to your pump um, we always disconnect that for travel. Uh, we always suggest that you guys do the same. On the, on the new units, there's going to be a connector right here, uh, right on the cable. So and then it's going to be a toolless operation. We're actually uh, converting our fleet over to that right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the, the reason we do this is we've had um, uh, Street Smarts had an issue, and uh, I know of one customer that had this happen to him twice. Uh, but the board's being towed down the down the road behind a truck or is on the trailer on a semi truck and it started to lift up for no reason right their malf malfunctions do happen so we ours that actually happened to us it raised up a wall on a semi truck as it was raised it hit a bridge um it was, it was a really big ordeal so you know to prevent anything you know luckily nobody got hurt the message board didn't land on anybody it broke into multiple pieces um Nobody was hurt. There's no accidents or anything. So we're very thankful of that. Um, but now as a preventative measure, we always disconnect all the battery cables to the pumps on everything. Okay. Joe, do are all the manufacturers, so there's, I don't know, what, five, six, seven, eight manufacturers of message boards. Do they all kind of, you know, have the hydraulic pump and the same general features? They do. They do. They, they all use six volt batteries. They all use pumps. They all pretty much use the exact same pump. They all use the same amount of chargers. So really when you start digging into them, uh, really the, the only difference is just how they wire their system, what they call their, their column car, their circuit board, stuff like that. So otherwise they're, they're very similar. Um, this next question, what is it? It's, it's a, how would you release the message board? How would you release, release the message board down if it lost pressure and is sitting on the pin? Okay. Yeah. So if, if this board was, was down all the way, you know, say it was in between here and it was pressing on here. Um, what, what we would do there is use, uh, jacks. So we, you know, we, we can show you on the tech truck here, we have, a um, a jack stand that, that we like to use. This is by, by no means the, the best way to do it. Um, yep. Yep. So we just, we put it right here on the, on the case. Lift that up. Yeah, I think there's a, a reach or something. Yeah. All right. We don't yeah. have to get into it. All right, one of those. Raise it up, right? Yep. Yep. So we would just we would just raise that up, get it up there, and literally just push it. It'll start to spin. It'll come off the jacks. Um, you know that that has been been an issue in the past. You know, unfortunately, when you can't get to the batteries or you can't get to uh, the pump. It's pretty much the only way you you can get the battery or the case off the battery boxes. Okay. Real quick, you want to hit on the modem and why we use those? Yep. Perfect. Okay. So like like Brady said, uh, we have modems inside most of our units here. Uh, actually, pretty much anything that Street Smart has has a modem on there. There's multiple reasons for that. Uh, with the modem plugged in, we can do remote troubleshooting. Um, so that our crew can can dial into it. We can we can run some diagnostics and we can run tests on the board remotely to help you guys troubleshoot. Uh, a, a, another reason why we have those in there is for tracking purposes. If you're if the message board gets stolen off the job, uh, uh, a, a com another company that has the job right next to it takes it thinking thinking it's theirs and brings it to their yard. We can track that with the GPS in there. So all of our modems are wired up to always be on for remote access and GPS systems. Um, always a, a, just a great feature to have. All right. Thank you, Joe. Get another drink of water. <laughs> We're going to head over to the aero board now. Um, 
We're going to spend two minutes on the aero board and then we're going to wrap up over on our, on our tech truck. This is your, all right, this is your, your Vermac Pro Series Aero Board. As you can see here, there is no battery box down below. Uh, the reason for that is the battery is actually inside the sign case itself. So this, this Aero Board is fully functional without a trailer. It has the, aero, the, the battery put in the back of it. It also has the controller that's on the back side of it as well. Um, as you can see, their lamps have changed a little bit. You have the aero board hoods. Uh, when it comes to aero boards, they're pretty much all the same. They all have lamps, they all have hoods. It's just a matter of how the manufacturer runs the power and where the controller's at. Um, uh, they have some the wireless aero boards. So on the wireless ones, there is a syncing procedure that, that you need to do. All the handhelds are always interchangeable. So as, as long as you have it, uh, as, as long as you sync it up, any controller will work with, with any wireless aero board. Um, these technically are not wireless. They look wireless, uh, but that's because everything's embedded right inside the aero board. If people need lamps or hoods, can they call Street Smart? Always, always. You need any, you need the full aero board, you can call Street Smart. <laughs> uh, if, it, yeah. <laughs> if you need, if there's, you know, there's always some, some technical things with, with different manufacturers. Um, so anytime you have a question, you know, call us first. We'll be able to get you in that right direction right away. All right, Joe, you head over to the truck. I'll meet you there in just a second. Um, at the beginning of the call, I talked about all the equipment we have available to rent or purchase. Uh, we got our full-size portable traffic signals. Um, those are becoming increasingly popular around the nation. A um, couple other things real quick. Obviously the aero boards. Um, these smaller traffic signals, um, so meant for uh, lane closures, you know, you, you roll those out and um, these come in sets of four uh, in a, in a self-enclosed trailer. So if you need those, we can rent those anywhere. And then this device here, we're, we're pretty happy about. Um, we're seeing some really nice traction in the auto flagger. So um, if you want more information on this automated flagger, this is a North American device. Uh, they tow in sets of two. It allows you to um, operate lane closures with one flagger using a wireless remote control. Um, they use point-to-point -point radio communication to talk to each other. And again, meant for daily, um, more short-term lane closures, um, getting the human flaggers off the roadway and just creating a much safer environment um, for, for the workers. And uh, it's, a, it's a more commanding presence on the roadway with the red and uh, amber light and then the gate arms um, than just a traditional um, flagger. So uh, anybody has questions on any of this equipment, let us know. We're going to talk now about um, the tech truck. So when you do get that problem, you know, the, the aero board's not working or the message board's not working, what are, what are the kind of common tools and, and, and things you should have in your truck at all times so you can not only diagnose the problem of, of what's going on, but also maybe make a couple other improvements to, to that device. Joe mentioned adding the, the water to the batteries, checking on that stuff. So, Joe, you want to walk us through what we have here? Graham, if you can pull that in nice and tight so people can see some of these tools. Um, let's start with this thing. I can't believe you haven't mentioned your, your best friend in the whole world yet in this webinar. Um, talk about that and, and why you love this thing so much. Okay. As, as Brady said, this is your best friend, okay? Every tech truck should have it. Every technician should have them. You can get them for 40 to 50 bucks online. It doesn't have to be a fancy flute or anything else. If it reads DC voltage, you're good to go. Never go to a message board, aero board, any piece of equipment without this device, right? A voltmeter is key. Let's go show them how it works. So what, th this is things a little bit overwhelming to me. What setting should it be on and what am I looking at? Right, so really your main thing is you just see the, the V with the, the line and then the dotted line, okay? That's going to be your volt DC and then your volt AC. That's the alternating current. That's why it kind of goes up and down like that. So we always want it on the, on the DC 20. Nothing that we, do, that we do goes over 20 volts. So if we have this device set up here, we have your, uh, your DC set. 
on. We just go positive and negative with the terminals. This battery is sitting at 6.3 volts DC. So if we go over here to these ones here that we already have uh, linked in series, you now you can see we have 12.67 volts on those batteries. So as I was saying before, even with the solar regulator to test those, you need this piece right here to test that solar regulator. Um, again, I can't stress enough how important it is to have one of these in your tech trucks when you're going out. Uh, never send your techs out empty handed. Like I said, majority of the time, we can either fix it on the phone or tell you exactly what parts are needed on the phone in a 15, 20 minute phone call. This will expedite that process and making sure that you have your, um, your parts, you know, your parts and your appropriate tools on there. Sometimes we can even fix it on the spot. So is this, what is that? A Sperry brand? Yep. This okay. Is a, this is a Sperry. Is that your favorite? Um, this is just kind of the one we, we started using. Um, it's a, it, it is a very reliable one. Um, you know, I'd probably stay away from like your $20 ones. What happens there, the cords end up getting really bad, really quick. And then you get intermittent, um, connectivity, which then you're going to question your voltmeter, which means you're going to question everything. Okay. So this Sperry one is a pretty good, a pretty good model. This model, the DM 6400 is discontinued. I believe it's a 6450 now. Um, if you need any advice on a, on a voltmeter, just contact anybody here and we'll be able to direct you in the right way. All right. So chances are, if you call one of our team and they, you ask about a question, that's the first thing they're going to ask is, you know, do you have good batteries, right? <laughs> well, we're going to ask you if you had your voltmeter with you. That's one of the first questions that we ask because, again, okay. this will tell us a lot. All right. We got about 10 more minutes here and we got a lot to cover. Uh, we talked about the voltmeter. 40 to 50 bucks for a good one? Yep, okay. absolutely, yep. Um, talk us through some of these tools real quick, Joe. Okay, so uh, again, some, some, some really specific tools are going to be your, your electrical tools. Uh, so you're going to want, you know, a crimper, strippers, bus splices, uh, terminal rings, stuff like that. Just kind of a, a, an array of different, um, different connectors. Um, <clears throat> so we have all sorts of, all sorts of goodies in here. Um, you know, never know when you're going to need a hammer. Sometimes you got to bend something straight, jacks, uh, stuff like that. Uh, a precision screwdriver set is always going to be a good idea. Same with a full, uh, full socket set. Um, and then even a, even a smaller socket set, even some smaller nut drives, stuff like that are, are definitely handy. The, the Vermac touchscreens run with a quarter inch nut and a three sixteenths nut. So it's always nice to have, you know, the appropriate tools to take out, take out a touch screen. Um, like I said, the, the precision tool set, usually just a flathead precision uh, screwdriver will take care of the majority of your needs. Uh, you know, your impacts for your, your easy removal and addition of batteries. Um, speaking of batteries, we have the, the battery straps, the handles on them. Um, if you go right over here real quick, Graham, as you can see, right, these just loop into... Uh, these two spots here, and you can easily lift these up. Now, each one of these batteries weighs about 55 pounds. Um, really, the best and easiest way, the best for your guys, is to carry them two at a time. I know that probably sounds a little bit different, having you guys carry uh, 110 pounds at one time, but you have to figure you're holding 110 pounds, you know, straight up. You're not leaning to one side with that, that 55 pounds, so... Just a little safety tip for their backs. How about the straps? What are we using these for? <laughs> oh, straps, stupid, but you know, straps to be used for, for many things when it comes to, you know, if your brake doesn't work on your message board, if the, the jack isn't holding up properly for towing, uh, for strapping your batteries in the back of your truck, um, you know, all the straps are always, always necessary. Uh, gloves are always good. And obviously, you want your you know, your reflective jackets, reflective pants. I mean, the, the whole point of having your tech truck supplied right is to get your guy off the road safely. Nobody wants to be out there. It's unsafe to be on the side of the road. The quicker he can get in and out of there, the safer he's going to be. Um, but, yeah, other than that, just, you know, uh, a shovel is actually a, a, a really good idea um, when you're going to do deployments. As we know, ditches are not level. Sometimes you need to, to dig down a little bit to get your, get your jack in there or even having some dunnage, some chunks of wood, um, anything to make a nice flat surface um, or if you're down on that ditch to elevate that up just a little bit. All right. I see something that's missing from this truck. Uh, batteries. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> right. Oh, I'd, absolutely. Anytime you go out to check out any type of equipment, if you're having an issue, always bring batteries. Um, you know, if, if it's a message board, you can bring four batteries. If you're going out to a sensor trailer, uh, a pep trailer, you're going to want to bring more. If you have, you guys are just doing rounds, bring eight, 10, 12 batteries with you. Um, that it, it's always a great idea because batteries are something that, again, the thieves love to steal. And it's also, you know, they're pretty sensitive, right? So they, they can crack, they can, they can go bad. So having batteries is key. Yeah. Um, something, I don't know, maybe you did hit on it. How many times can uh, you expect a battery to kind of go dead and then charge it back in its lifetime? Is there a number? Uh, there's, a, there's, there's really not a number, but if you, if you kill your battery all the way, uh, and, and by all the way, a six volt battery, if you drop it down to under two volts, that's, that's killing it. Um, you half-life your battery. So if a battery life expectancy is five years um, and you half-life it, now the battery life expectancy is only two and a half years. You won't necessarily damage anything right away. You won't see the damage. It's all about the longevity. So that, that, that half-life, as we call it, um, that can happen from um, a discharge or an overcharge or, as they call a hot charge, which is adding acid, stuff like that. All those can can ruin the longevity of your battery, which just means you have to replace an expensive part even sooner. Nice. All right. Cool. Um, I hit on this at the beginning, but we do have some kind of uh, maintenance checklists and stuff, and, and I'll make sure and uh, send one of those out to everybody that joined the call. Um, any questions in the chat, Matt, that we haven't gotten to, or um, any any final questions, please throw them down in the chat. Um, Joe, we covered a lot today. Um, I, I love your passion and enthusiasm. It seems like when we, when we talk to customers anywhere in the nation, your name comes up first because, because you, you know, have gotten them out of a bind um, and, and really helped make sure that not only when they have our equipment that it's in tip top shape, but, but help them with their own equipment. So thanks for, um, thanks for joining us today. It looks like we have a couple more questions coming in. Um, before we get to those, um, just want to reiterate, um, you know, uh, let's see, one 653 And I'll say it again, put that number in your cell phone, 888-653-6800. Have your texts in, have that in their cell phone because when they're out along the uh, freeway, um, they call that number that rings to street smart and then we can help them. Um, we have guys that they come to work every day and they, they, that's all they do is troubleshoot questions help people keep this equipment um, on, on the road and, and operating. So, um, questions? If you have a 75 watt solar panel, could you use a 100 watt or do you need to keep it the same? Okay, no. question is if I'm using a 75 watt panel, can I swap it out with a 100 watt panel? Uh, is it a swap out or in conjunction with? Uh, I'll, I'll actually answer both of those, okay? So if you wanted to add different wattage panels uh, to create a full wattage that, uh, you know, a full system, that's fine. You can have different wattages. Panels get hooked up like batteries in the, in the parallel sense, right? So you get your, your positive to positive, negative to negative. That's going to, um, that's going to increase your, your wattage on your, uh, on your, on your message board. Um, now if you're, if you're replacing, uh, solar panels, you really never want to go smaller. So if you have a, a 100 watt panel on something, you don't really want to put an 85 watt on there. You'd either want to go with 100 or you know 120, something like that. Okay. I would never go go lower, but you can always go bigger. I know you mentioned obviously if it's shaded like your phone, it's going to impact the solar. If it's cracked, same thing. Yeah, yeah. So actually, um, it, it's hardened glass, so it's actually going to break like your windshield. Right? You won't have just a single crack going down. It it's going to be spidered. Now what happens then, that sunlight comes down and reflects off those cracks and goes away. Technically, it's still going to function. It's just not going to function to its peak performance. Okay. Any other questions we hadn't hit? Okay, again, uh, if you learned something today, put it down in the chat. We're going to draw um, one winner, a $50 Amazon gift card. I saw some of those coming in, so it's exciting to, to see. Um, a lot of people didn't know that batteries could freeze, um, things like that. Um, so it's, it's good. Um, again, one more time. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, if you've never worked with street smart, 
uh, make sure you give us a call. We can put you in touch with your local rep. We provide um, C to C to Shining C rental and sales of all this equipment um, and then repair. You know, if you have a, a character card that needs to be repaired, uh, don't send it to the manufacturer. Chances are Joe and his team can help you get it repaired. If you have questions, uh, like I say, most of you have a boneyard out back with five, six, 20, 50 trailers that you know just needs a few hours of work, but you don't have time to get to it. Um, give us a call. We could maybe even send a guy out and, and, and give you a laundry list of what needs to be fixed and, and what needs to go to the junkyard. So um, happy to help. A couple final questions here. Where are we located in Colorado? Commerce City, which is on the northern side of the of Denver, uh, pretty close to the airport. That it? Oh, that was pretty easy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, if, if anybody, if you want to get into the weeds, uh, batteries, solar regulators, you know, uh, like like Brady said, I, I got a passion for this stuff. Um, if I don't know the answers, I'll find it. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is being wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want to talk solar regulators, the batteries, message boards, aero boards, anything, contact us, ask for Joe. Um, I'll, I'll be happy to answer anything, any questions that you have. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Have a great spring. And one last question. We work on all solar We work on everything. Yep. Yep. Send them, send them in. <laughs> so, awesome. Thank you so much. We'll do this again here soon. Um, if you want to additional information on a particular topic, let us know. Uh, very well could be the, the topic of our next webinar. So thank you, everyone. Appreciate your business, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.